Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. This is KL2151 Makmal Electric dan Electronic 2. My name is Dr. Iskandar Yahya and this is lab briefing for lab 4, FET biasing and amplifiers. The lab outcome for this lab are Design, construct and test FET circuits and amplifiers. Understand the biasing of FET circuits and FET amplifier applications. The prerequisite are Knowledge on FET functions equations of FET parameters, basic FET amplifier configurations and equations. Equipment and components. This is supply from your IDL, oscilloscope and two oscilloscope ropes, function generator, breadboard or protoboard, and channel JFET 2N5457, five five potentiometer 1 kilo ohms, capacitors and resistors. The lab instruction has been uploaded in iFolio. Part A and Part B are compulsory and for Part C, you need to do the question according to your lab day. As usual, each student needs to complete their own pre-lab work and present the pre-lab during the lab. Let's first look at some JFET theory. JFET stands for Junction Field Effect Transistor. A transistor can be imagined as a water pipe with a pipe valve. The function of a pipe valve is to control the amount of water flowing from one end of the pipe to the other end of the pipe. This is done by turning the valve open or closed. Similarly, a transistor is used to control the amount of current flowing through the channel. In a field effect transistor, the gate terminal is used to control the amount of current flowing between the source and drain terminals. We can therefore imagine that the two ends of the pipes are the source and drain terminals of our transistor and the valve is our gate terminal. This is a basic JFET structure. The example shown here is an N-type or N-channel JFET. It consists of a drain, source and gate. The area between the drain and source is the channel in which our drain current is flowing and the gate is located at the top and bottom of the channel. By applying a bias or voltage at the gates, we can control the amount of electrons flowing from source to drain and therefore controlling the current flowing between the drain and source. JFET operation A JFET is a normally on device. That means if there is no gate bias, that is, if VG is zero, current can be conducted between the source and the drain and the channel will behave like a resistor. Let's look at what happens when we vary the gate bias VG. The blue regions between the PN interfaces are the depletion regions. Because of these depletion regions, current cannot flow between the channel and the gate terminal. Therefore, the gate current IG is ideally zero all the time. When VGS is zero, current can flow in the channel known as drain current ID. In this case, the value of ID is determined by drain to source voltage VDS. Looking at ID versus VDS graph, the curve is a straight line, indicating that the channel is in fact behaving like a resistor with resistance equal to the inverse of the slope. When we set VGS to be a negative value, the PN junction becomes reverse biased and therefore the depletion regions width becomes bigger. This results in the channel to have smaller width and therefore current becomes smaller and channel resistance increases. If we make VGS even more negative, the depletion regions become bigger until the top and bottom ones meet in the channel. When this happens, the channel is virtually filled with the depletion region and current cannot flow in the channel. Therefore now, the device has been turned off. If we let VGS equals to zero and gradually increase the drain to source voltage VDS, drain current ID will flow in the channel. If VDS is big enough, it can induce the widening of the depletion region near the drain terminal and the channel will be restricted, increasing the channel resistance. The ID versus VDS will start to become non-linear. If the top and bottom depletion region meet at this point, we call this pinching or pinch off point. It means the depletion region pinches the channel and restricts the amount of current flowing. The VDS value that results in this pinch off is VD set. Therefore, the current will become saturated. 
the ID versus VDF curve will become a saturated straight line. At this point, the drain current ID is equal to IDSS and will remain to be at this value if VDS is increased beyond VDZ. I will now show you how to view the JFET characteristics using the curve tracer. Before you begin, make sure you have read all the lab instructions. Follow each step carefully. If you are not sure, ask the demo or myself. It is recommended that you prepare the tables and list of all the required results parameters that you need to measure and calculate. Let's look at the experiments. Section A, Part 1. This experiment is to determine drain saturation current, IDSS and pinch off voltage VP. Construct circuit in figure 1. Make sure that your potentiometer is connected correctly. Follow the instructions after that. I will show you the simulation example. In this example, I'll be using circuit lab. Here I have constructed the uh, circuit for figure 1. Make sure that you have the earth or the grounding for all the necessary terminals. Make sure that you have the values of the power supply correct and also the component values for resistor to be correct. For your JFET, you need to make sure that you are using the right JFET which is 2N5457. It is not included in the catalog so what you have to do is to double click the component 
and then you need to add your own parameters for the model that you are using so since we are using 2 and 5 4 5 7 you can follow the parameter configuration as I have done here once you have done that click save custom device model and it will be saved inside your device model data and you can in the future click this device model to be used later on once you are happy with your circuit we will do the simulation and we are using DC sweep in DC sweep what we are trying to do here is to make the gate voltage more and more negative so starting from zero and then making it more negative and we do that by adjusting the potentiometer so we are sweeping the value of the potentiometer from zero all the way up to one kilo ohms so at the parameter click R6 which is our potentiometer but what we are adjusting is not the value of the resistor but we are adjusting the value of the position of the potentiometer so it's not R6R but rather it is R6K so if you double click your potentiometer okay you have the maximum uh, resistance value which is 1K or the rating of the potentiometer and you also have K K stands for the position of the knob so the position can be all from 0 all the way to 1 and then in this experiment we are sweeping the the gate voltage therefore we are sweeping the k value from zero all the way to one so we in simulation this is sweep we select the r6k value linear and start at zero and at n at one and then the steps maybe we can say that we take a step of 0 0.01 okay and we are looking at the VG so we need to click the VG remove the current and then we are also trying to look at VRD which is the voltage across RD so to do that we need to select one point there and then another point here because we need to subtract this value to this value alright we need to subtract the voltage at this point and at this point to get what is the voltage drop across the resistor so once you're happy with that we can click run DC sweep okay so we get something like this so what we want is to look at what is the value of VGS when the value of VRD is around 1 millivolt so it should be somewhere around here so in this case your VGS at which pinch off occur is negative 1.710 volts we can also look at what is the current at saturation by uh, choosing add expression and then just click here okay and we get current through the transistor which is iti so remove that and then run the dc sweep again okay so we can look at the current so the current starts from around 4 milliamps and then when we apply bias at the gate voltage which is equal to minus 1.7 the device will be turned off so no more currents flowing through the drain and source so we have a switch off the device so no more current is flowing that is the simulation for circuit figure one section a part two self bias circuit design this experiment is to determine rd and rs for self bias configuration you need to do calculations and plotting of graph id versus vgs to find the q point calculation is based on the results that you get from part one for section b common source transistor amplifier in part one measurement of saturation drain current idss and vp Use the curve tracer or follow the lab instructions to experimentally determine the parameters needed. Section B, Common Source Transistor Amplifier Part 2, DC Bias of Common Source Circuit. Plot the graphs and do the calculations similar to Section A. For Part 3, AC Voltage Gain of Common Source Circuit. In this experiment, you will be testing your amplifier circuit by feeding in an AC input signal. 
use the function generator to produce the required AC signal and feed it into the amplifier input to the measurements at the output. Remember that since you are using AC signals, the voltage measurements must be using the RMS values. Make sure that you have set the multimeter to measure VRMS of AC voltage. You can also use the oscilloscope to display the signals and measure the voltages accordingly. For part 4, input and output impedance measurement, follow the lab instructions. You need to calculate the theoretical input and output impedances and compare them to the measured values. For section C, FET amplifier design. Use self bias bypass configuration, which is similar to section A. Choose the correct values of RD and RS to get the specified gain, AV, and the correct biasing. I will now show you an example simulation for an amplifier with gain AV equals to minus 8. I have constructed my amplifier circuit and it looks something like the amplifier design in figure 4. This is expected because I'm using the same self bias bypass configuration, so it should more or less look the same. Alright, the only thing that I need to change here is the value of RD and RS. For the value of RS, it is important that you choose the correct value in order to make sure that your transistor is biased correctly. Even though you are using the same kind of transistor, based on the manufacturer of the transistor, there exists some variation in the parameters inside the transistor. So you need to experimentally determine what is the RS that you need in order to get a balance or a symmetry output swing. Since, my, uh, since the gain that I want is AV equals to minus 8, what I can do is to change my RD. So I have calculated my RD and it should be around 3200 ohms. Once I have determined what my RD value is, I can do the simulation. I'm doing the time domain simulation. The start time should be around 1 second and stop time is 1.01 .01 second and step time as small as I can get it to. All right. We are looking at the input voltage and also the output voltage and we can remove the currents because we are not interested in the currents and then we click runtime domain simulation. Okay, so once the simulation has been completed, we can see this is the yellow line is our output and the cayenne or the blue line is our input. In order to determine whether we have done the uh, gain correctly, so what we can do is to measure what is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the output. And it is 1.641. Since my input is 0.2 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, so 1.64 divided by 0.2 is exactly 8.2 so my uh, amplifier has produced a gain of minus 8.2 so which is roughly uh, near minus 8 so for your amplifier design i can accept your answer if it's plus minus 1 so for your lab report make sure that you have produced individual report handwritten and submit on the following day check rubric for marking scheme in ifolio and include pre-lab work in your report that's all from me now. Thank you and have fun for your lab.